Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today, I want to talk about templates. Creating and working with templates is a super important technique in Logic Pro, one that very well may revolutionize the way you work once you get the hang of it, and one that can definitely save you a lot of time. Now, template is a pretty broad term. It can mean lots of things and there's a ton of variety in how you can set them up and implement them. But today, we're gonna focus on one specific type of template, the default template. If you're far enough along in your Logic Pro journey to be watching nerdy YouTube channels like this one, you've probably realized just how many options and settings there are in Logic Pro. It's a truly overwhelming amount. But the key to making all of those settings work for you instead of against you is the default template. This is a template that you can use every time you start a new Logic Pro project and one that contains all of the settings and customization just the way you like it. So how do we create our template? Very simple to start off. With Logic Pro open, go to the File menu and select New from Template. That gets us to the Choose a Project dialog box. And to start setting up a template, we're just going to create a new project. In the New Project tab, we have the first place where we can choose the settings we like for our template. If you have a specific tempo or key you always like to work in, feel free to set that here. But for me, I changed that from project to project, so I'm just gonna leave it as the default. The two things I really want to make sure we set up properly here is first, our interface. So that's choosing the correct interface in the input and output device menus. And the second thing is the sample rate. It's very important to set the sample rate you like to work at most times here so that it always comes up the same when you load your template. That way you don't have to worry about accidentally starting a new project at the wrong sample rate. For me, I typically work at 48 kilohertz. That's because it's the standard for video, so when I'm mixing music for film or creating YouTube videos, this is what I want. And it works just fine for music-only projects as well. Once that's set, hit Choose and create a new Logic project. To start, I'm just gonna load one stereo audio track. To make a stereo track, we must come to the audio input menu and choose a stereo pair of inputs. I'll choose input one and two. More on why I want a stereo track in a moment. Now we can start tweaking settings to our preferences. I'm gonna first customize the look of the LCD. That's this top middle information panel here. Click on this disclosure triangle to the right and choose customize control bar and display. Then in the LCD column, we're gonna change the top drop-down menu to Custom. Now we can choose the different informational elements we want to see in the LCD. It's really up to you what are the most important pieces of information to be displayed here, but for me, I like to see the following things all the time. The sample rate. So I can make double sure I'm always working at the correct sample rate. If you've never heard the results of incorrect clocking, consider yourself lucky. <laughs> The tempo, time signature, and key of the project, so I can make changes if I need to and always have a reference available. And finally, the CPU performance meter, because I'm a nerd and I'm curious about which tasks take the most of my CPU to run. You can also customize any other functions you want to see in the different sections of the control bar in this window. Once we have everything selected that we wanna see, we can just click off of this menu, then we're gonna to return to that same disclosure triangle and this time in the menu choose save as default. Now the customized information will always be displayed in the LCD for every new logic project you create and will also be saved into your template. But do note it doesn't change the view of the LCD for projects you've created in the past. Next up, I like to create a default screen set. Screen sets are the different configurations of the windows of Logic Pro, and you access them by pressing the one through nine number keys across the top of your keyboard. You can actually have up to 99 different screen sets, which is a little excessive, but you can set multiple up if you have multiple different screen configurations you like to work with. But for me, I think it's easy enough to access all of the different screens I want with other keyboard shortcuts, so I'm just gonna focus on one screen set. 
let's call it a default screen set. I just want a screen set to be able to quickly snap back to a default view, one where I can see my entire project in the main window with no extra windows open. So let's set that up. I'm just gonna have nothing extra open, just the normal main window view, and I'm gonna zoom out so I can see about three and a half minutes of runtime in the main window. It's about an average song length. So the key thing to know about screen sets is that the one that is currently active will be updated and saved every time you make a change to your screen configuration. But by coming to the screen sets menu here at the top, you'll see it's labeled with the number of the currently active screen set. So one for me right now. In this menu, we can choose to lock the current screen set. This means no matter what changes we make to the view of Logic Pro, we can always hit the number one on the keyboard and it will snap back to this default view. I view this as a bit of a fail safe. I always know I can get back to a standard view no matter how much craziness I get going on my screen. Now, when it comes to really diving into the settings to tweak for making a default template, it's very important to understand the distinction between the two settings menus in Logic Pro. First up, there are the global settings, and these ones are found in the Logic Pro menu. The things selected in this window affect every Logic project you open. They change settings for the application as a whole, not for the specific project you're working on. However, there is another settings menu called the project settings. This one is found under the file menu. And these settings only apply to the project that is currently open. So it's a hot topic and causes a lot of frustration among Logic users as to which settings apply to the application as a whole and which settings apply only to the open project. But the way to avoid any of that frustration is by having a default template. This way we can set the exact project settings we want save them into our template, and then they will be recalled every time we start a new project with that template. We can even import our saved project settings into old sessions or sessions that have been shared with us just by using this final menu item here and selecting our saved template. Again, it is very much up to you which project settings you want to tweak, but here are a few that I like to set up. The most important one for me is in the MIDI section. Once there, navigate to the Chase tab. Then check the tick box next to Notes. Enabling this feature means that you will be able to start playback in the middle of a MIDI note and hear it instantaneously. Basically as if it were audio. Without this setting on, you have to wait for the point in playback where a new MIDI note starts so it re-triggers the instrument before you hear anything. It can also be a good idea to customize the sound of the metronome. Tweak the note and velocity settings of the three different timing categories until you get a metronome sound that you like. You're gonna be hearing your metronome a lot when you're recording, so it's a good idea to set something up that's not too grating or annoying for you to listen to a lot, but can still be heard over top of a dense production. Now that we have the project-based settings dialed in perfectly, let's turn our attention to the tracks in our session. So the reason I started off by creating just one stereo audio track is because there is a certain default setting in Logic Pro that I absolutely hate. And I want to make sure I change it in my template. And that is the default pan mode for stereo tracks. In Logic Pro, there are three different panning modes for stereo tracks, balance, stereo pan, and binaural. I made a video with all of the nitty gritty details about panning in Logic Pro. I'll link that down below. But very basically, when panning a stereo track in the default balance mode, all you're doing is turning the volume of one side of the signal down as you pan to the opposite side. But in stereo pan mode, when you pan, you're combining the two signals together into one speaker. And to me, that's what I want when panning a stereo track. So on this stereo track we have, we're going to right click on the pan knob in the channel strip and switch to stereo pan. Now this is good enough to just save into our template, but we can take it a step further and save this as a patch. 
With the track header selected, open the library, come down to the bottom and hit the save button. Give your patch a unique name and hit save. Now you'll find the default stereo patch inside your user patches section of the library and you can load it into any session. To take it even further, by selecting the patch in the library and coming down to this three dot icon, we can then define this as default. Now, when you add a new audio track to any session, you can select the load default patch option. And if you select a stereo input to create a stereo track, it will have the pan mode set to stereo pan like it should be. It is important to note that you must save this as a patch in the library and not as a channel strip setting. Channel strip settings only contain the plugin inserts and do not contain sends or pan information. To save those things, you must save as a patch. The other types of tracks you want to include in your template is again, totally a personal preference thing. If you use certain software instruments for drums all the time, you may want to include a few tracks of that channel strip, or you may want to include audio tracks that route to all of the physical inputs in your studio for different mics or guitar amps or synths or whatever you have. It's very dependent on the setup of your studio, your workflow, and just how you like to work in general. For me, I like to start from as much of a blank slate as possible every time I start a new song. It keeps me from getting into a rut using the same stuff over and over again, and it allows me to custom tailor the tracks to the song I'm working on, and that's something that's really important for my workflow. So I just have three tracks in my template, a stereo audio track that I can record stereo mics or my guitar amp emulator on, a mono audio track that I can record a single mic on, and a software instrument track with an empty channel strip. I can then easily double these and reroute these and add plugins to make a custom layout for each song. Once you've set up everything that you want to include in your default template, it's time to save it. Simply come up to the file menu and choose save as template. Give your template a unique name and hit save. You will see that logic did not save this project. And that's exactly what we want. We can just exit out of this project and not save it. We've already saved the template. Then when we go to start a new project, we again go to file new from template. Then instead of going to the new project tab, we come down to my templates and there it is. We can choose our default template that pulls up a fresh logic pro session with all of the settings we just set up ready to start a new song, but we can still make this even more streamlined by changing the default startup action in the global settings. Go to the Logic Pro menu, Settings, and General. Then we're gonna change the selection next to Startup Action to Create New Project Using Default Template. Then click on Select Template. Up pops the Choose a Project dialog box where, once we get the Settings menu out of the way, we can navigate to My Templates and select our default template. Now, every time we open Logic Pro, it loads our default template ready to go. It definitely takes some time to set every little detail up properly, and you very well might find some things you wanna change along the way. And that's super easy to do. Just load up a session from your template, make the changes you want, then choose File Save as Template again, title it with the same name, and then you'll get this dialog box and choose replace. And that'll write over that old template and save the new one. Even though it takes a bit of time to set up, having everything dialed in like this will save you so much time in the long run. And it really can help fine tune your workflow. The goal here is to get the technical stuff all the way out of the way so you can focus 100% on making music. I hope this gave you some good insight into just how powerful templates can be in Logic Pro. You can definitely take this way further than I did by setting up genre specific templates or templates for the different types of work you do like mixing, mastering, writing, post-production, whatever. The customization options are endless, but the process for setting them up is the same. Drop a comment below and let me know how you utilize templates in Logic Pro. I love hearing about your workflows and learning from all of you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.